with Venom 2 going in front of cameras sooner rather than later, they're looking to meet that October of 2020 release date. There's already been changes behind the camera with the director getting the boot and Andy Serkis coming on. Other behind the scenes changes are happening. And now we're hearing that it could serve as a soft reboot of source. So let's get into it. And as always, if you guys enjoy the content we have here, we do offer more. If you guys check out the little membership thing down below. Okay, so soft reboot. I have to explain what this is as opposed to a full-on reboot. If you look at the likes of Bumblebee, that film ignores events that happen within the universe and it ignores them to a big degree while also serving to acknowledge some of those events and characters and it serves as a sort of standalone piece that could be seen as a reboot but still has some of those things that it hinges on from the past. It's a very um, interesting way to handle things. Now the rumor is coming at us is that Venom specifically Venom 2, is going to serve as a soft reboot of the first film. Now, what I've been told personally is that this is something that they're looking at and they are going to treat it as such, where you are keeping large elements of what happened in the first film. So you're looking at the likes of Woody Harrelson as Carnage. He's staying. Tom Hardy as Venom. He's staying. The universe they're in, that's all staying. But certain elements of the past and the future are going to retroactively be kind of added in there to add a little bit more depth to it. Now, I don't know why they could be doing this. My assumption would be is due to Spider-Man's involvement going forward and, of course, the addition of Morbius. Now, this to me would make a lot of sense. Let's say, for example, if there's a scene of Eddie Brock and it flashes back to New York, who's to say that at some point he didn't run into Michael Morbius and they establish a connective tissue there by having Jared Leto's Morbius appear and they share you know a conversation at the bugle or something who really knows right i'm just spitballing here but they could do that and i think this is probably the best way they could take it they certainly have a way better director this time with andy circus so if they treat this as a sort of soft reboot they can pitch it to the people that maybe didn't like the first venom movie and were like i'm not gonna go see the sequel if the sequel is pitched as something it's a brand new take on the character that's kind of devoid of what happened before but it looks way better and we're handling it more seriously it could bring these people back for a second round this has happened before with franchises it's certainly going to keep happening and if we look at hollywood that's exactly what's happening with other franchises like gi joe for example they're like well it's not exactly a reboot with snake eyes but it's a pre it, it's a it's a soft reboot okay just they're afraid to say it but that's what it is because the moment you say reboot it's a negative you know like a cloud above you right so they don't want to say it but I've been told this was the case about a couple weeks ago. And now that other people are starting to come out with the same news, I'm inclined to believe that they are going to treat it like that. So they'll make sure they mention, yeah, events happened in the first film. Yes, they did. But check out these other things that happened that maybe you didn't see. Sort of like how Batman Forever was a soft reboot of what happened in the Keaton films. And then Batman and Robin was a continuation, but it also felt almost like a soft reboot of what happened in Forever. So it's an interesting way to do it, but it's Hollywood and it's nothing if interesting. So um, it's, uh, it's going to be sweet to see how they handle this, but with Circus behind the camera, I'm hyped.